Connor McDavid and Jack Eichel have been the face of their franchise since the day they were drafted. Eichel even predicted he was going to Buffalo. It's always been Eichel versus McDavid since they were drafted 1 and 2 in the 2015 NHL entry draft. But the dumpster fire that is the Edmonton Oilers and the burning pile of garbage that has been the Buffalo Sabres have failed to put together a winning formula for their two young superstars. Connor McDavid has only seen 17 games of postseason hockey where Jack Eichel has yet to sniff the playoffs. In this video, we are going to be simulating the entire career of Connor McDavid and Jack Eichel, see what Buffalo and Edmonton are going to do to bring the Stanley Cup to their respective cities. Both of these players have given everything. I mean, they're only 23 years old, but they've put it all out there on the ice. It's up to management. It's up to them to see if they can win a Stanley Cup. I'm going to be controlling a CPU team, staying out of the way of Buffalo and Edmonton. And let's see which young superstar is going to win a Stanley Cup first. So for year number one, the Buffalo Sabres are looking good. They got Taylor Hall and Jack Eichel. Taylor Hall on the one-year deal. Hopefully he stays long-term. Jack Eichel locked up long-term on a $60 million deal for the next six years. He's in Buffalo for the long haul. Their goaltending is questionable, but so is Edmonton. So here is Connor McDavid's squad obviously playing with Leon. He's at a 95 overall. Also locked up on a very similar deal. Six years at $12.5 million. You look at their defense and then you look at the goaltending, it's pretty similar. At the year one trade deadline, both teams waste no time making a blockbuster. The Oilers address their goaltending, getting Stanley Cup champion Jordan Binnington, and the Buffalo Sabres get Nicholas Jalmerson for the back end. So both teams making moves early on. Jalmerson solidifies the top four, and the Oilers finally have a starting goalie. And with that starting goalie, they finish with 102 points, finishing seventh in the National Hockey League. And for the Buffalo Sabres, it's another year on the outside looking in. Jack Eichel has 88 points, 40 goals on the year. A very good year, but Connor McDavid laughs in Connor McDavid fashion. He has 111 points where they go on a deep postseason run, losing in the Western Conference Final to the Colorado Avalanche. Year number two has Eichel jumping up to a 93 overall. Nothing really changes for the Buffalo Sabres. They get rid of Nicholas Chalmerson. He was only here for the one short year where they eventually missed out on the postseason. They do have Antti Ranta now as a goaltender, and Connor McDavid is a 97 overall. They finish eighth in the NHL, and Buffalo as well makes the postseason, finishing 11th with 96 points. Eichel has a monstrous year, 44 goals, 104 points, but of course, McDavid one-ups him with 109. That is a massive year for Connor McDavid. Back-to-back -back years, putting the team on his back as per usual. And the Oilers have another deep run, finishing one game short of the Stanley Cup. They lose in seven games to the Toronto Maple Leafs. You hate to see it, but you love to see Joe Thornton getting a Stanley Cup with the Maple Leafs. After that, he calls it quits. Year three has some improvement with Buffalo. Dylan Cousins makes the team, and Jack Eichel is now a 94 overall so he keeps getting better their defense is questionable they have a 66 overall defenseman I've never heard of they do have Andy Ranta between the pipes once again so a legitimate goaltender as for the Edmonton Oilers McDavid still a 97 they go with the veteran approach getting Patrick Marlowe and Brendan Dubinsky they're looking for a Stanley Cup so this is a good team to try it with exact same thing with PK Subban as well the Oilers make a huge mistake and let Stanley Cup Cup winner Jordan Binnington walk in free agency, but they make a blockbuster move acquiring Jonathan Drouin to play alongside of Connor McDavid. Drouin's having a crazy year, 36 goals in 63 games, so hopefully that can be a nice winger to play alongside of Connor McDavid, and it looks to be the case because they finished second in the NHL, 105 points. As for the Buffalo Sabres, they actually make the playoffs. Jack Eichel is about to see postseason hockey. Thank 
god. And he has a monster year, 110 points. Olufsen with 104, so they're big guns getting it done in Buffalo. But of course, Connor McDavid has to one-up Jack Eichel. He can never have anything nice. 120 points for Connor McDavid. Jonathan Drouin had 18 points in 20 games. And again, the Oilers go on a lengthy postseason run, but unfortunately, losing in the Western Conference Final to the Chicago Blackhawks. Buffalo gets bounced in round number one in seven games to the Boston Bruins. McDavid wins all the hardware except for the Stanley Cup. Four years in here, it's nice to see Taylor Hall sticking around with the Buffalo Sabres and Jack Eichel. They make some moves on the back end, bringing in Ty Smith, a nice young defenseman. They also bring in Duncan Keith, a guy who has a lot of playoff experience, and UPL is now the main starter in Buffalo. As for Edmonton, they get Tuka Rask, a guy who's also been to the dance before, looking for another Stanley Cup. It's kind of weird to see Kaylor Yamamoto not grow. He's at only at an 83 overall. Jonathan Drouin seems to be a nice fit here in Edmonton. Both of these teams make the playoffs. Usually it's Edmonton above Buffalo, but it's Buffalo above Edmonton this time. So Jack Eichel doing something right. 93 points, but of course, Connor McDavid, he gets two more points just to one-up him. Story of Jack Eichel's life. 93 points, not good enough. Both teams not good enough in the playoffs. Both get bounced in round number one in only five games. Five years in here, the Buffalo Sabres start to make some good moves. They bring in Joshua Waugh and Braden Shen to play alongside of Dylan Cousins. They also give Josh Hosang a chance as well, but Joshua Waugh looks like a pretty good prospect for them. They now bring in Pavel Francouz. I'm not quite sure where UPL went. Edmonton makes a big splash, bringing in 91 overall Noah Hannafin, and again, Kaylor Yamamoto still hasn't grown alongside of Connor McDavid, but they have an 80 overall goalie with an old 78 overall Tuka Rask. I'm not sure how well this is going to go for Edmonton. Let's find out. Buffalo makes the postseason at 101 points, finishing sixth in the National Hockey League. And of course, Edmonton falls off a cliff. Jack Eichel with 112 points, Mr. Consistency for the Buffalo Sabres. This time, Connor doesn't one up him. He only gets 104, a measly 104 points. But Buffalo once again loses in seven games in round number one. Year number six shows Buffalo not making any major moves. They believe in the core they have. Hopefully it can get the job done for them. However, their defense is questionable. 77, a 70, and a 69. That's not great. UPL is back in the royal blue. I My best guess, it was a contract dispute. He held out for one year. Regardless, he's back at a 91 overall, just like Jack Eichel. It is worth noting Eichel is on his last remaining year on that giant ticket he signed. Edmonton makes some minor moves. Kaylor Yamamoto still hasn't grown. Their defense isn't that great either. And between the pipes, get this, Edmonton is rocking with a 63 overall goaltender and a 58. This is me mashing the buttons in frustration. What are you doing? And that blows up in Edmonton's face. They are drafting second overall. The NHL loses two superstars. Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin, they hang up the skates. Buffalo has a huge year, 101 points, finishing third in the entire NHL. We know the Edmonton Oilers were hot garbage this year. They finished dead last. They actually lost the draft lottery. Jack Eichel has 55 goals. Talk about putting the team on your back. He wants a ring so badly. Even though the Oilers were god-awful, Connor McDavid still had over 100 points. I mean, that's what you get when you have a 63 overall goaltender. The playoff frustration continues for Buffalo. Bounce in the first round once again. I'd be furious if I was Jack Eichel. Second overall, the Edmonton Oilers make a decent pick. They pick Isaac DeMaio, who is a two-way forward, 80 overall out of the draft. It looks like Jack Eichel re-signed with the Buffalo Sabres on a massive deal. Six years, just shy of 14 million bucks. Connor McDavid also 
also re-signed, and the Oilers don't look that great, but Isaac DeMaio makes the team out of camp. Their defense gets a little bit better, but they still are rocking with two 60 overall goalies. I just don't understand. Mash those buttons in frustration. The Buffalo Sabres are once again consistent in the postseason, and the Edmonton Oilers, despite having a couple 60 overall goalies, just miss out on the playoffs. Jack Eichel earning every bit of that 13.9 million dollar contract, 119 points. This guy is unbelievable. He needs some playoff success. And then Connor McDavid just has 120. One more point just because he's Connor McDavid. If I was Jack Eichel, I'd be so upset. Uh, but here we go once again, 68 overall goalies. They did better than I thought, but the playoff struggles continue. I know I sound like a broken record, bounced in the first round by the Ottawa Senators in only five games. We're eight years in here and the Buffalo Stabers are still hoping that they can just ride the shoulders of Jack Eichel and Rasmus Dahlin to the promised land. They're not surrounding them with much talent, especially on the back end. They do have a decent goalie in UPL who's 88 overall. Kaylor Yamamoto finally grows to a 90, just shot up from an 83 to a 90. So hopefully that's good news for the Edmonton Oilers and Connor McDavid because both of these superstars need a Stanley Cup. The defense on Edmonton is questionable and they finally found a goalie with Alexander Georgiev which is nice to see. McDavid makes a little bit less than Jack Eichel so Eichel has that over Connor. Buffalo also finishes ahead of Edmonton in the standings not by a whole lot 109 points to 97. Jack Eichel has one point shy of the century mark and Connor McDavid smashes the 100 point mark because he can just rubbing it in Jack Eichel's face. McDavid has been in this sim well, McDavid, basically a cheat code, 124 points, a massive year that does not translate to playoff success. They get swept by the Coyotes in the first round. Buffalo makes it out of round one, but they lose in six games to the Boston Bruins. Year number nine here, we're going to have a look at how incredibly consistent Jack Eichel has been. He's basically the only reason why the Buffalo Sabres have been in the playoffs, just Mr. Consistency. He's put the team on his back time and time again. Him and Rasmus Dahlin doing the majority of the work. They now have a goaltender in their prime, 91 overall. Kaylor Yamamoto drops down to an 83 after being a 90, so I'm not sure what's going on there in Edmonton, but their defense doesn't look that good, but they're still rocking with Alexander Georgiev. Speaking of Alexander, the great eight ends up retiring in year number nine with 1,100 goals. The Edmonton Oilers make the postseason and and the Buffalo Sabres just fall off a cliff. What was looking like one of their most promising years didn't turn out to be that great. Another disappointing year in Buffalo, but Connor McDavid has 112 points because he can. Jack Eichel had basically no support. He had 96 points. Casey Middlestat was the closest with 68. So putting the team on his back, Georgiev and UPL both won the Vesna in back-to-back -back years. And drum roll, please, the Edmonton Oilers get bounced in the the first round shocker. We are now 10 years in here with the Buffalo Sabres. They found a replacement for Taylor Hall, who ended up leaving in free agency. They signed 89 overall Nils Hoglander. Their defense basically stays the exact same. Not a lot has changed here in Buffalo. Exact same thing for Edmonton as well. They bring in Peyton Krebs and Clem Costin. Their defense stays up basically the exact same. They bring in John Marino, who they actually originally drafted, fun fact. Uh, Alexander Georgiev, he's been a beast for them and the Edmonton Oilers have another awesome year finishing third in the NHL and Buffalo finishes 12th so again both teams in the postseason looks like Edmonton's found a nice replacement for Taylor Hall with the former Vancouver Canuck the Swedish goat Nils Hoglander he has 94 points where Jack Eichel has 97 and of course Connor McDavid has to one-up him that's a nice one-two punch in Buffalo but not quite as nice as McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl here's 
here's just a look at how dominant Connor McDavid has been, closing in on 1,600 points. And guess what? Both of these teams get eliminated in the first round. I can't believe the lack of playoff success. It's unbelievable. The Canucks have been to the Stanley Cup final for three straight years. I thought I would just uh, showcase some stats here. McKinnon is basically a cheat code. Wins the heart every single year, basically. Wins the Art Ross every other year. He is absolutely insane. It's kind of cool to see some of these other stats, like uh, Jack Hughes has three Conn Smythe trophies in his young career. At the time of this, he's only 29 years old. Georgiev wins the Vesna for back-to-back -back years, but McKinnon is just absolutely on fire. He is lighting up the league. Look at these numbers. I've done a lot of franchise modes, seen a lot of simulations, but this one has been the craziest. Look at those numbers that McKinnon's putting up. Just crazy. Moving into year 11, and I think we're starting to see the decline of Jack Eichel. He drops to 85, and Buffalo throws him on the wing. McDavid's still a legitimate first liner, not going anywhere anytime soon. Their goaltending is still the exact same. In year 11, Edmonton finishes third in the National Hockey League. Another big year for Edmonton, but Buffalo as well finishing 12th in the NHL. Still a consistent playoff team. Jack Eichel with 54 goals. Jack attack, 85 overall put him on the wing doesn't matter but of course Connor McDavid being Connor McDavid has 126 points it's ridiculous living up to his contract of course and the playoff success you guessed it does not continue both teams eliminated in the first round I don't know what's going on here in Buffalo and Edmonton but it is ridiculous the amount of first round exits we've been seeing even though Eichel had over 50 goals last year, he still drops to an 82 overall at 34 years old. It's sad to see it end like this. I know Eichel still got some left in the tank. I'm hoping he can have a big bounce back year. I really want to see Jack Eichel win a cup. He's in the last year of his current deal. Is this all he's going to take with Buffalo? Is he going to move on? Honestly, I kind of hope so. McDavid has three years left. He's dropped down to a 90 overall. So not not quite the decline we saw with Jack Eichel, but their defense looks kind of weak. They got a new goalie in Philip Gustafson, so I'm wondering how this is going to work out for Edmonton. They finish fifth in the NHL. Buffalo again finishes 11th. They kind of always hover around that area. Jack Eichel bounces back in a big way. Another 50 goal year, 90 points, rinse and repeat for Captain Jack. Going over to Edmonton, seeing what Connor McDavid's up to. Well, another Connor McDavid like season. Philip Gustafson looks good in his first year in Edmonton. So good, in fact, they win the Stanley Cup. Finally, finally it happens. They beat out New Jersey in five games. Incredibly, the Conn Smythe goes to a 75 overall on the third line over Connor McDavid unbelievable. So Connor's got his ring, Jack Eichel still looking for his. He tries for one more year in Edmonton, one more year he says. Connor McDavid drops to an 89 overall, but he's got a Stanley Cup ring so he could be whatever overall. He's still winning against Jack Eichel. Their defense looks awful, their goaltending, I mean it got them a Stanley Cup ring last year, but you may have noticed Leon Draisaitl was no longer an Edmonton Oiler. He is now a Toronto Maple Leaf. That's a little bit weird. Uh, end of year 13, Nathan McKinnon calls it quits. Both teams finish with 96 points on the dot. So both teams are headed into the postseason. Eichel doesn't lead his team in scoring for the first time, and I don't know how long that goes to Joshua Waugh. Connor McDavid, of course, led his team down to an 86 overall. So both of these guys are dropping fast, but still putting up pretty decent numbers. Both of these teams get bounced in the second round because of course they do, but Connor's got his ring, so I guess that's all that matters. Going into the 14th year, and Jack Eichel is nowhere to be found on the Buffalo Sabres. I repeat, Jack Eichel is no longer a Buffalo Sabre. Eichel is a Winnipeg Jet. That sounds weird. That shouldn't even be allowed. Jack Eichel is now a member of the Winnipeg Jets. Kind of interesting how he chose Winnipeg, because they don't look like a very good team, but regardless, he signs a one-year deal worth just over $7.5 Connor McDavid's over 
overall decides to just jump off Mount Everest. He's in his final year of his contract at a 78 overall, but I have a feeling he's going to bounce back because he's Connor McDavid. Both teams end up making the playoffs, Winnipeg and Edmonton. Edmonton with 99, Winnipeg with 91 points, and you knew he was going to bounce back. Come on, another 100 point year for Connor McDavid because of course he decided to bounce back. Again, this is his last year, so he could test free agency. Connor McDavid and the Oilers get eliminated in the second round, and Jack Eichel gets swept in the first with his new team, the Winnipeg Jets, and that's all he can handle. He can't handle any more playoff failures. 1,500 games on the dot, and he only played 97 playoff games. It's unfortunate that he didn't have a better outcome. Connor McDavid is eventually going to test free agency in year number 15. We'll go over both of their stats at the end of the video. He is six points shy of 2,000 in his career, and Connor McDavid decides to go from Edmonton, cold Edmonton, to nice warm Tampa Bay. He deserves it. Looking for point number 2,000. He signs a one-year $11.8 million contract with the Tampa Bay Lightning. That's just weird to see. It doesn't quite look right. Tampa was a good choice. They finished fourth in the NHL, but they get eliminated in the first round. And Connor McDavid, he also calls it quits. Just over 2,000 points in his NHL career. That is absolutely ridiculous. What a career for Connor McDavid. He finishes with one Stanley Cup. Let's go over some stats. No question both of these players are first ballot Hall of Famers. Jack Eichel leads the Buffalo Sabres all time in basically every offensive category. Same thing with Connor McDavid. They both put in years of work for their respective franchises. Connor got his ring, but Jack Eichel will always be one of the, if not the best player to never win a Stanley Cup. You hate to see it. So let's start with Jack Eichel. He played exactly 50 1,500 National Hockey League games, one point shy of 1,700 points, zero cups, zero individual awards. He was stuck behind not only McDavid, but also stuck behind Nathan McKinnon, who was the reason why Connor McDavid didn't have that many individual awards either. But I seriously, I feel so bad for Jack Eichel in real life and in this simulation. I wanted him to win some sort of anything, literally anything. Poor Jack Eichel retires with a whole bunch of points, for sure going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer, made a whole bunch of money in his career, but unfortunately zero cups, zero individual awards. It is worth noting that Jack Eichel would be ninth all time in points scored with those points, so definitely a first ballot Hall of Famer, top 10 player of all time. Moving on to Connor McDavid, who had just under 1,600 games played, 872 goals, just under 2,000 assists, and 2,068 career points. Finishes with one Stanley Cup, four Hart Trophies, two Rocket Richards, two Art Rosses, and four Ted Lindsay trophies. Again, there was the dominance of Nathan McKinnon. He basically won every award every single year, but McDavid did have a few years in there where he snuck in, took a couple of hearts and Art Rosses for himself. But thank you for watching. That was a lot of fun to make. I don't remember the last time I put this much work into a video. It's kind of fun to do though. I really, really hope Buffalo and Edmonton get their shit together because both of these superstars need to eventually play some playoff hockey hockey and hopefully win a Stanley Cup. So thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you think I should do this with anyone else or any other two players, let me know and I'll see you guys in the next one.